Jesus. All right, how's everybody doing this afternoon? Awesome. Thanks for coming back for the second class. Today we're going to talk about the difference between Facebook ads and boosted posts. And mainly we're going to be in the Facebook ads manager. So a lot of the things I'll show you guys and we can work through open kind of workshop, but I'll lead you guys through how to deploy a bunch of different kinds of ads in Facebook and why you would choose to deploy an ad versus a boosted post, why you would choose a boosted post over an ad, why a different type, all the different types of ads in Ads Manager. As I started getting into this a couple of years ago, I started realizing like, as I was deploying more and more ads for different clients, I started realizing that, okay, there's actually like 12 different kinds of ads, each with a different objective. And within each objective, there are even different ways within Facebook that you can serve the ad itself based on either clicks or impressions or something off of the tracking pixel, which we'll get into. And the more that you pick the right one, the better the results for your business. So if you're trying to generate leads through a form, then we're gonna to wanna to steer you towards an objective that's gathering information through a form on an ad. If you're, if you're looking to sell an e-commerce product, there's actually a purchase objective ad that you can run where Facebook will show the ad to people who are more likely to purchase a, a product off of your website based off of their user profile, their behavior, and Facebook's algorithm. So, um, and then, Kind of the overarching theme of today is I want to go through kind of like some concepts behind planning out maybe like a year or like six to 12 months of Facebook marketing because if you have the mindset of this is what should happen in the first three months, this is what should happen in the next three months, and this is what should happen in the next three to six months, then you're gonna be really successful versus thinking, okay, I'm gonna try this for a month and put a couple hundred dollars behind it as a media spend <laughs> and sort of expect a large return on investment on that. I think a lot of times with any kind of digital media, the expectation for whatever reason is, well, I don't even know if it's an expectation, but the reality is like, it's easy to try, so people try it, but then they might only try it for like a month or two and then they're not really sure what happened. And so they're like, well, let's just not do this again because we don't even really know what it did for us. So I think I want to demystify that and if we can like answer any questions that you guys have on that too. So, um, so we'll look at a little bit of data and then we'll talk about the strategy that I just kind of uh, gave an overview of. We want to get you to a point where you at least feel comfortable in your Facebook ads manager with what it's like to deploy an ad and like not, you know, just kind of if for those of you who have already done an ad, you probably already know that the first time you did it, there was like a little bit of trepidation around like, okay, what's gonna happen? When is this gonna start running? How am I gonna get billed? What credit cards on file, all that. <clears throat> but once you actually run an ad and you start to get some of the results back, then that knowledge level kind of lets the fear go away and it gets to a point where you, you kind of get in control of it. So that's what I mean by like feel like a master is like at least get to the point where you feel comfortable with what you would be doing if you were to run a, a even like a page like campaign, which Kate and I will kind of talk a little bit about. Chris is going to help a little bit too because he's got a lot of experience with uh, Facebook marketing and, and, business and ads manager. Um, but like even a Facebook like campaign can be an extremely effective uh, way to build up a, fo a loyal following and then have um, a more effective way to reach your audience um, with, future, with future ad spend. So we'll talk about that. And then news feed ads, we'll talk about the Facebook tracking pixel and what that is because it, it, it's more than anything, it allows you to do more kinds of relevant ad placements to users who are really interested in your brand versus just users that are on Facebook. Um, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on the, the data behind it, but there's a lot of 
numbers that justify why you would want to put money into Facebook as an advertising platform and other social media outlets as an advertising platform. And the main themes behind all of these numbers are basically that the amount of active users that are on each of the native platforms themselves, but also the amount of time that they spend and the, the attention that is on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn and some of the other social media outlets. And we kind of go in order here. We go Facebook and Instagram first, mainly because of the, the, the volume of active users that are on each platform. I mean, it is kind of accurate to say everyone is on these platforms. Like, there is no, the data shows that no, no person from any organization, B2B or B2C, can come in and say, our audience isn't on Facebook or our audience isn't on Instagram because it's just not true. It's a, that's just an excuse for not wanting to do it um, because like literally the most niche audience, you can go into that insights tool that we kind of showed you guys um, last time and you can go into what, what, what I'll show you today is when you're actually, even when you're building an ad, you can start to put audience um, interests and behavioral targeting into the ad and you'll see just how many people from different groups are actually on Facebook. And, uh, and then Instagram, the other reason why we're spending so much time on fa Facebook Ad Manager is because you can deploy ads, on it, not only on Instagram, but Instagram story swipe up ads, as well as just the entire Facebook audience network basically means like 60 to 80% of mobile apps that you would use that have like, we, like last class we talked about Fonto, that's a good example. Every time I use Fonto, there's an ad that I see before and after I do my action, and the ad is deployed from Facebook Ads Manager. So it's very much like Google, in that Google not only is the search engine results, but it's, it includes just about everywhere else that you would go on the internet or in a mobile app as well. So that's, that's what the audience, Facebook audience network refers to. Um, LinkedIn, we don't get in as much into LinkedIn today, but all of the concepts that I talk about with Facebook really apply to LinkedIn. Um, it, it really does have all of the same functionality that I'm about to show you in Facebook. It just has a smaller niche audience in that it is obviously primarily known as B2B, and it's, extremely, it's an extremely effective B2B um, marketing tool organically as well as on the paid side, so we'll talk a little bit about that. And then Twitter is, is kind of its own beast only because it's um, really just, just such that, it's just a short news cycle. It's like Twitter's like the news cycle, whereas a Facebook ad is like, that can be your quarter, your quarterly media plan or your, your annual media plan can be Facebook ads. Um, where it makes sense to run Facebook ads for that long. And obviously, a promoted tweet only really makes sense to, to run during like a particular news cycle while something's relevant. So when you get the deck um, in the link that we email out later, you get some more stats on just kind of like the average monthly, uh, or excuse me, the average annual income of, of like LinkedIn, um, $75,000 annual uh, average uh, income on the LinkedIn user, different kind of different stats here. Um, Facebook users from the 40, uh, 50, 45 to 54 demographics spend more time on Facebook, represent 21% of the total time spent on the platform more than any other age group. So the things that you read in headlines are the things that you hear. Um, when you get into the data, they're justified around, they're embellished in the headlines, right? So you start to hear things like, only my grandma is on Facebook and only 12 year olds are on Musical.ly. Okay, like, not only, but like, yes, most people on Musical.ly are 12 to 13, but there's also 45 year old dentists on Musical.ly that are marketing effectively to 12 and 13 year olds. Like, so it's, it's it kind of, but, so be, but because those people are on different, it's not only, it's just that it, it does make up uh, most of the, of the group. So um, this just kind of justifies what I was saying earlier in terms of why we're focusing so much on Facebook and Instagram today in terms of the active uh, users on each platform. And then this is a slide that we really like that we put together. We did some research around like 
just in, in our, um, in the, the Nashville uh, DMA, like basically the cost per audience attention is far lower on Facebook than it is on uh, outdoor television and radio. And so not that, I had somebody ask me yesterday on a phone call, is radio and, and TV and other traditional media still relevant and effective? And it totally is because like now, you, for example, if you're a YouTube TV subscriber, you can't really skip commercials easily. Like, right, so you went from like DVR where you're skipping commercials and now, like I was watching it with my son last night and like we could skip the commercial but by the time it buffers, you might as well just watch the commercial. So now like you're forced to watch those commercials but the point is Facebook still doesn't cost nearly as much. So even though those other forms of traditional media are still relevant, and sometimes considered safer, the digital side just still doesn't cost as much. The digital side we're going to talk about today. Um, so where we last left off, we talked about a lot about content. Um, before we jump into like the overall strategy and everything, uh, how does everybody kind of feel so far about like the last month's worth of uh, content in terms of just even if you haven't been able to implement a lot of it, how do you get? How do you guys kind of feel coming out of the last class? Anything you want to bring back up or review or discuss? Anything? Well, in my situation, I just got to figure out what to post. You know, we're you know we're a business to business. And, you know, it's not something. It's not a service. It's more some products. So it's kind of you know, trying to find something or I don't know. It's trying to find something to post. Original content. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, that definitely helped last month. Got your brain moving a little bit. Yeah, just figuring out created what's the tram for work and, and all that stuff. I didn't have that. Yeah. It's a lot of, uh, I mean, it takes a while to get going. It's almost like you have to tr swing and miss a lot before you start to get some singles and stuff. So uh -huh. oh, I think it's like practice. <laughs> Softball, good, good one. Softball reference. I, I'm doing right now a business, like a, a B2B that I, that's with a medical company, you know, with these carts, and I'm going and I'm like scouring through all of the, they're trying to target hospitals, so I'll go to the hospital target and figure out an old, old post that they made where they were like really innovative, because this company's like trying to be innovative. Okay. And then I'm just like, oh, and I created a hashtag that's like, um, you know, fellow innovators or medical innovation, you know, whatever. And so I'm kind of just repurposing their thing, and the marketing people on their end are really happy that I'm, you know, spinning their stuff up. Um, so it's stealing is, is okay, and then they're loving that you know you're tagging your business there, a couple other people, other hospitals. So it's kind of it's working so far until someone gets really angry. Yeah, the hardest part of having the Instagram and just created that is getting anybody to follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like that's gonna happen. Hours. Yes, it takes a while. It does. That takes a while, and what'll happen is like you'll. So we say to use like ten or more hashtags in every single post. Oh, okay. But what happens is you'll get, you'll jump up. So if you're at two, you'll jump up to like fifteen, and then you'll be like mm -hmm. off of a couple. You know, if you post like, let's say you post four more times this week. Okay. So you'll jump up to like fifteen. And you'll be feeling great. And then all of a sudden, like, you'll check it the next day, and you'll be at, like, 8. Because <laughs> what will happen is uh, there's a lot of bots out there, and there's a lot of follow-unfollow. Yeah. And so the follow-unfollow is where, you know, it, it's what, happened, used, what used to happen back in, like, 2009 and 2010 on Twitter, where people would expect the follow back, and then, and then they just go unfollow so that their number of people they're following is lower than the number of people following right. them. Mm -hmm. So I think you just have to, like... Being, like, really everyone in this room, I think, just needs to focus on, like, what Kate said about repurposing valuable content. And I try to think about what are, what are the top five questions that I got asked last month? Or what are the top, like, if there was any question that I got asked more than once, then I should create, like, three different pieces of content around that. Yeah, like, uh, just if, if you're familiar yeah. with this, not working one been doing constant contact for about the last year. I think it doesn't do much at all. I mean, you know, one percent click rate. Yeah. Is that even? I mean, 
Do you know much about it? people are even doing much with those? Or For email, big email waste, marketing? Like a big waste of time. Like, so you're, how, you're sending out email, yeah. email marketing, and what are you doing, like, about one so a month? Like and we started doing, last couple months, we have a segment, we came up with Ask the Tape Doc, and a little guy <laughs> for it and everything. And I'm like, I'd probably be better off to do that on, on Instagram or something. You know? Yeah. I would come up with, I would do that on Instagram and on Facebook and yeah, on LinkedIn and since you're B2B. We used to pay this other company a couple thousand dollars a month to be on the registry. It wasn't generating much, so you know, now we got to figure out where to put some of that money. So ask the tape doc, like that's something you could do just organically. No, don't, at first don't pay anyone anything or don't pay mm -hmm. any media fees at all to the platforms. Just come up with the content of... What are the top? What are ten things that you could ask the tape doc and just start by coming up with them yourself? Since you're this, you guys are the subject matter experts, and just do it's just a frequently asked questions page on your website. Just oh, repurposing yeah. that into if you have ten frequently asked questions, repurposing that into ten different posts, and then um, oh, okay. on the content side, like I think cert, like um, starting with. The detail, like the details of what you know about your industry, like for me it would be like I would go and search hashtags like Google Analytics or, um, you know, some like the different tools that I use like Google Tag Manager. So for you, it might be something that is a manufacturer of a particular type of tape or a new um, a new concept in the industry, and then researching a hashtag on Instagram around that, and um, going and following a few of those people and commenting on their posts. That's the other way, the other big way to build up, especially on Instagram, because it is hard to build like an, an Instagram following. It's a long, arduous process of doing it. Yeah. But um, I'll, steer this, I'll steal this one from my boy Gary V, because I think he gives like practical advice every once in a while. And one thing that he said recently was, um, if you go and find 10 posts that are relevant to your industry on Instagram every day. Now every day is a lot, but just conceptually, if you were to do it every day and go and go comment like and leave an insightful comment. Find like find someone else's post that has like five or more comments. If someone has 100 or more comments, even better because it's just more visibility for you. But let's say Tapes and Tech or or National Fashion Alliance, for example, goes out and comments on, uh, leaves like an insightful two to three sentence comment on Instagram on someone else's post or replying to someone else's comment and do that 10 times. Gary V says do, do 90 comments leaving your two cents every day and then they call, he calls it the dollar 80. Mm -hmm. So you, he calls it like the dollar 80 philosophy. But your Instagram, like that is how you will build an Instagram following because people on those comments will see, oh my gosh, like National Fashion Alliance, like they left a pretty insightful comment. I might go, I'm gonna click on them and maybe follow them or interact with them. Whereas 99% of people on Instagram are like, fire emoji, fire emoji, clap emoji, clap emoji, <laughs> cool. Like those, like yeah. that's, that's not what's gonna get you the, the follow, like the real audience, but. The, the I think people. too the problem is, is like, why would I post if two people see it? <laughs> you know, it's yeah, kind of like, it a yeah, because it's a little bit discouraging, but remember like, them. if you don't post, then you'll never get anyone to follow you. So you just have to keep going and then know that you'll maybe use some of those again too. And repost stuff that's funny, like, mm -hmm. I think people love humor, and when, yeah. if you find something that you, you know, totally. you run across when you're doing a hashtag search, you know, repost it, totally. and people love that. It's funny. So that's great too. So there's the for those of you that don't know what Liz is talking about is there's an app called Repost for Instagram. It's free and you can. Um, it's not intuitive though. No, it's not intuitive. Basically, what happens is you like you click Repost, nothing happens, yeah. but, then, but then it goes into your photo, yeah. your camera roll, and then it's in your camera roll, and then you can upload it to Instagram, and you can you can actually remove the little Repost icon. Yeah. I think most people don't because they want to give credit to the original person, which you should. But uh, I think, I mean, that's effective too. Like I, I've done that, um, finding some accounts just to, because we say, like I'll say over and over again to try to post three to five times a day on Instagram. And it's impossible with all of our schedules unless you use something like repost where you, uh, you're, you don't have to come up with everything yourself. 
Um, so that's a good, and it's important to have this content conversation too before we jump right into the ads, right? Because you know, you probably, like I know Callahan's got some stuff happening right now where you, like your mind might be in this particular place where we talk about these ads and you're like, oh, that makes sense with my plan, but we might have some others in the room that are just trying to figure out like what, you know. It's actually not. Because, <laughs> uh, our, because we're a, an organization, we don't really have a, besides our membership, which we is a pretty, like, you want to be a member because you're part of the industry, we don't really have anything that we're like actively selling mm -hmm. right now. And even our major events that we do later in the year, like, they're, there are two things that I can think of this year that I would want to run an ad for, but it's mm -hmm. I don't know. I yeah. want to know more. Like how yeah. can I <laughs> That's good. That's why I want to talk about page light campaigns too. And so first we'll kind of talk about boosted posts and then getting into uh, ads, what the difference is. So some this might be a review for some of you guys because I think we talked about it last time too. But when you look at a boosted post, you're really trying to you're really looking at like more like Twitter where we feel like this post was relevant for this particular time period and or it did really well uh, out of out of the five posts we made last week on Facebook it it happened to get more traction than the others like la last month Kate talked about like Facebook live video that's another one that like, you're struggling with what to post you know even just going live and documenting part of your day even if it's you at your computer, is honestly better, like way better than nothing. Because it's, uh, the data shows that your Facebook Live audience is getting far more traction than just a regular Facebook post. Um, and so the boosted post is gonna be more thinking along the lines of, okay, something did a little bit better than, uh, than normal, so let's go ahead and get it out to more people. And I think this is a good time to also weave in the discussion about a page like campaign. I would encourage everyone to, like, if you do nothing else coming out of today's uh, meeting, class, go run, like, a two, take whatever money you would have spent against any kind of digital media or even take, like, $200 away from, like, some kind of direct mail or something else that you guys are doing. Take some money away from something. Send less email marketing next month or something save like two hundred two hundred dollars and in for the remainder of March because it's only the seventh today do a two hundred dollar and end it on March 31st is this it's March has 31 days right end it on March 31st and have it be uh, targeted at so like targeted at your target audience so it's, it's as simple as going into we could kind of do one right now together so this is what we've been doing. And when I go into the data-driven design ads manager, ad account, um, It's it's been yeah it's been like around two dollars per page like under two dollars per page like That's what I was so basically what this is is it's like a cost per customer acquisition because what you're doing is you're going out and getting people in your so all I did here was I just went to my page my business page and the you should all probably see like this promote button you could do like promote and then promote your page. And you could do, I'll show you how to do this in Ads Manager too. But it basically just starts, it just brings up those two clicks. It brings up what an ad would look like. And it, it'll, it'll take your hero, like your uh, cover image from your page. But if you go to edit, edit ad creative, you can actually like select a different, uh, you, can, you can make a video in the tool, you can, upload a video, uh, you can upload different images. Does it um, tell you what the specifications are for that? Or like yeah, it, uh, it certainly does. I want to say it's 1,200 by, there we go, image library. 
six or something. Yeah. Six thirty or something. Twelve hundred by six. Twelve hundred by six something. As long as your image is uh, landscape, yeah. it'll do the. It'll do it for you. It'll do a pretty good job. But yeah. twelve hundred wide is at least a good practice because it's actually scaling it down by two, mm -hmm. so that on retina screens is nice and sharp and not blurry. So it'll give you a preview of what it look what it'll look like on all devices also. Um, it like it it'll t and it'll tell you as you're building it like what the resolution is of each image that you're uploading. Um, and really, you just kind of want, you only have, like, it's, it's pretty foolproof because you really only have 90 characters for your text up here. So you want to make it very, just like one headline about what your business is. Like, you're, you know, you have five seconds to describe your business. Um, and then the targeting is the cool part. So like I've done some different targeting, like we've tried, okay, business owners and marketing professionals is obviously one um, that work, that like makes sense for us. Um, I Like for this one, I put location living in the United States because we could try to get some business really from anywhere. It doesn't have to be, we don't have to do uh, business locally. We certainly have done like, um, like I've done CEOs, so I've run like, okay, I want, I, I've, I've run something where it's like, CEOs, do you know like that you could get more value if you looked at this? You know, and then like the creative is around like what would be uh, grabbing like grabbing a CEO's attention. So thinking through like who you're in for like a client example, one that kind of Kate was referring to, it would be like nurses as one audience, IT hospital IT staff is another audience, and then CEOs is another audience. So for them, like we could go in and you can, under audience, people you choose through targeting, and you can do create new audience. And then when you do create, this is what was in that screenshot in the presentation deck. But sometimes like doing it together. And you could even say like, you know, I'm thinking of like Mike and you guys with Stuart, you know, you could say, you know, you have an upcoming like IBM conference or whatever it is, and then you could just put you like your IBM audience is that real? Is that it's actually that? coming next week. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, so what? You but, could actually. You know, you could put like inter you know, have your IBM audience, and then you could use it every time you you need it, and then you know all the businesses that you're trying to target, and then it's set. So How the first one's going to take forty five minutes, so you and can then all subsequent ones are probably going to take yeah. half that time. Right. Okay. You can go in here, and you can do like IBM, and. IBM jump titles, mm -hmm. and then if you do suggestions, oh. it'll it'll tell you like I mean mine's all geared towards like it's it's trying to give me more or less the ones I've already picked, but you could do like um, try packaging suppliers, see if that would work for yeah for mine. Pack, packaging and labeling interest. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the first one takes a long time. Packaging and labeling interest, so but if you keep doing sub suggestions. Who would be like a, uh, Michael, is there like a number one client of yours that we could type in their business name in here and see what? Uh, you know, or like a, probably, or a competitor? No. Um, well, it's another supplier, it's um, Can Do National Tape. And how do you spell that? Uh, it's K-A-N, and then hyphen do, so they have it in their name, National of how much it's going to cost you. Um, <clears throat> this was one in, it looks like, about three months ago, and each like cost $2.86. Um, now, I think that that just, it seems expensive. Yeah. It does seem expensive. However, the idea that- Better is under awareness. And then we have consideration. Consideration is like the, this is the top of the marketing funnel, this is the middle of the marketing funnel where now you've acquired the customer, but they haven't purchased with you yet. 
So this is getting their information to potentially make a purchase. And then the conversion is them actually making purchases from you. Or, um, yeah, actually like becoming customers. So um, I, I, I take a break in the presentation here and I talk about store visit objective because I wanna just think of Facebook like this platform that you can use um, to not necessarily have to you don't have to use any other platform. Like you don't have to um, get someone to click through to a landing page. A lot of this stuff, like there's always gonna be the option to do that. But if you think of Facebook like this uh, content platform where you can deploy this ad to your target audience and they take an action right there on Facebook, all the way even down to like visiting a physical location. So one of your objectives can be um, under conversions can be like if you're a re if you have a retail location and you're trying to track like this could be relevant for let's say like more life or you care so you might want if you guys ever run a Facebook ad you might want to think like how do we like how does Dr. Moore know what business you actually got off of the Facebook ad you can even run something like the store visit objective where it'll track down to did that Facebook user uh, enter your physical location and it knows that based on the Facebook mobile app so just the power of the platform to be able to track ROI is basically the, the point of this slide so you're gonna deploy this like any other ad that I'm gonna show you how to do it's just it's important to pick the right objective because that's the data you're gonna get on the back end to be able to either justify it to yourself as like if you're the one managing your own budget or if you have um, you know you have to go get budget approvals and people and you have checks and balances you're held accountable to someone to say uh, someone's asking you like why did you spend this money what did you actually get for this money um, it's very important to pick the right objective so um, the goal of uh, this is kind of like the objective guide so it probably makes more sense to have it as like a resource for you to uh, review later but the overall concept is just First, you want to grow your audience. You want to re get more reach and impressions. Second, you want to get more considerations off of those reach and impressions. People that are likely to become customers, but they're not customers yet. And then third, it's going to get you customers. So when I talk about like that nine to 12 months, that's basically it. First three months, build awareness. Next three months, build consideration in the last three to six months and ongoing, hopefully you're building those actual conversions. So if you're patient, this is basically what it's gonna look like. First six to nine months, zero revenue. Each subsequent month after the nine months, you're gonna start to see like uh, two to three times the amount that you're spending on the platform for the ad. So, um, I mean, those of you who like, like Michael, you might have to, you, you have like, hard costs or supplier costs or things like that. So it's not as black and white as like, if I'm selling a digital product and I'm spending a thousand dollars a month and then I'm getting 3000, I'm like, sweet, right? But like for you, it might be, well, we need actually five X to make a profit off of that. So yeah, tracking you know, new calls we call, even though a lot of it's emails now, because we used to get a lot of them from this other company. But um, even the last year, we weren't getting much for them. Finally, I was like, we need to we're getting more inquiries straight from Google when we work yeah. on this company. So you're basically buying email email addresses from another company. Is that what you're saying? No, you're doing, or? no, no. We just were. I just went and got us so we. I didn't even do Google AdWords or anything. I just retweeted everything so we come up in the search. Okay. That's what was working. But what was this? What were you saying that wasn't working? That uh, this other company called Hughes. Um, what's it called? I can't remember the name, but Thomas Register. <coughs> they used to have books years ago uh, in the industry, and then you'd pay. I don't know, it's like $2,100 a month to be on the listing. Oh, uh, okay. And generate leads, and we got so we were getting like, you know, one a month. It doesn't matter, we track them whether they're close calls or not, just that yeah. they're getting. Of course, my boss is old school, he's like, well, the phones aren't ringing us. Yes, but the emails are going nuts. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's great. Cool. So, so this is my great. little, like, phased plan expectation, uh, where you're having fun at first, you're being very, very patient second, and then you're basically happy and converting third and and knowing that the way that you're the data that you're going to be looking at in your ads manager is that at first you're going to be seeing huge relatively huge impressions and reach numbers that's going to be what you're quantifying things to 
whoever you're held accountable to, then you're gonna be seeing more web traffic, which is more exciting because it gets people, because I mean, we, we hear this more than anybody because we work with clients on this. So every client's always asking us, in phase one, they're saying, well, that's great that you're getting the awareness, but then what about the, the web traffic? And then so it's, it's, then the web traffic comes and then the conversions come, because, and you're knowing that by phase three, you're actually not hitting that many people. You're only hitting the people that are really likely to convert. Your money's being spent off of ads that are being deployed off of the data from the tracking pixel. So don't get confused or overwhelmed by the tracking pixel. It's basically put in place so that there can be a phase three. Um, and and, and that's, it's a tool so that that's why phase three works. Because every ad that you're running in phase three, you're running to people who already have a high awareness level, brand loyalty, they're gonna be repeat customers, and you're, you're reminding them about uh, why they need to purchase from you at that given point in time. So, um, and then there's, there's gonna be, like the other part of the expectations is like, there's gonna be a lot of stuff that just doesn't work. It's just not gonna work as well as other stuff. So, you have to be very careful not to be jaded towards the platform in those instances because the platform is not necessarily built for everything to work. It's built for you to have a really turnkey way of trying a ton of different things for low risk that you wouldn't be able to try otherwise. So if you go into it like as a marketer with that mindset of like, if this platform didn't exist, there really wouldn't be any other way for me to do this. I mean, there's Google AdWords, you can do the same thing, that'll be the next class. But it, without these digital platforms, like, and Pinterest does the same thing, like whatever the platform is, the point is, if we didn't have these, like, how would we even know whether or not something would be more valuable than something else without spending like tens of thousands of dollars to, to learn that the hard way? Mm -hmm. So if you have the mindset of, and whoever you're working with, you can kind of build the communication around like, we are going to do this strategically, there are gonna be things that we try strategically, not everything is gonna work, but even the stuff that doesn't work in terms of driving conversions is gonna give us valuable data points that we wouldn't otherwise have for us to move forward with what does work. And that's why I put the green puke and poop emoji up there. So um, then measuring your goals. So, so this is like more detail, I won't read this grid to you, but this can be kind of a reference grid for like, if you're walking into a meeting, I tried to put some stuff in here around like, what would be the reasonable expectation for each phase? Cause you'll like, I get asked that question all the time. You, go, you guys will get asked that question. Anyone spending more than like $10 on anything is gonna wonder like, what am I getting back for that? <laughs> and fair enough. So this, this, this chart here kind of tells you like, all right, when we do this, this is what we should expect in each phase. So things like um, in phase two with web traffic, you should, incre you should expect to increase your web traffic by 50% month over month. Like things like, that's just like a baseline for what you should expect. Um, so I, I kind of went over this already, but just some definitions around, uh, so this is actually good to kind of recap, because you'll see, as you're in ads manager, you'll see all these. The good thing is it has all the definitions in it, so if you, if you can stay focused in the platform and just know that like if I click this little question mark over here and read the bubble, like it's gonna answer it for me and don't don't get overwhelmed by the platform and like bounce out because it's it's kinda it is kind of crazy. But the key things that I want to show you guys today is it has this thing called results. It will always say cost per result. And you'll always wonder what does that mean? And it's always gonna be based on the objective that you chose. That's why I'm like keep hammering home like that first objective that you choose. So if you choose link clicks, your result is gonna be your cost per link click. If you choose awareness, your, your result is gonna be reach. If you choose page likes, like we talked about page likes, it's gonna be cost per page like, and that's where we got the data around like how much a page like costs. There's also something called uh, cost per engagement, and that one confuses everyone. It confuses every client that we have. And so it, uh, Facebook has this metric on engagement, and that is related to uh, comments, likes, and shares of the posts, or, or anyone that might have clicked on the post and clicked through to a link. So you'll typically see that on um, ads where uh, 
that you're trying to build awareness in that phase. You'll see that more in phase one than you will in phase two and phase three. So initially you might be like, well, what is the cost per engagement? And it's basically just a metric of uh, how interested uh, your audience is in your post. Um, a little bit more down the funnel than just the reach, just somebody seeing it. So it's a good thing. Um, this, this view in here, and I can show, it to, show you how to find it here in a minute, but this is where, what I like about Ads Manager is when you're running ads, and this might look overwhelming right now, but like all you're doing is we just run an ad, and then in, in this view we have it to run multiple ads. Three of them are active in this view. But you can, these columns that you see here, you can change them all around. So you can go in and there's this little blue um, plus icon here, and you can, uh, if you just wanna see just a certain set of data, like the ones I'm recommending in phase one, would be your reach, frequency, you wanna see how much you're spending, your cost per result, and then there's this thing called the relevance score, which Facebook rates one out of 10. Um, it's, it's, it's nice to look at, to see you wanna be as close to a 10 as possible. That's uh, Facebook's way of kind of saying, was the content that you deployed to your target audience relevant or not? Um, so phase two, measuring web traffic and engagement. The other way to do that is in Google Analytics. So you'll have uh, data in Facebook Ads Manager to show how many link clicks and how many page views came from an ad. And then you'll also have data in Google Analytics. And the reason why I'm showing you this Google Analytics screenshot, all of you are in for all the classes, so you'll see this in the fourth class too. We'll get into it more in depth. But it's nice because you can, you can quantify like one platform versus other, other marketing that you're doing. Because that'll be the other thing that you'll, you'll, want, you'll always be questioned on, or you'll question yourself on is, should I be doing the email marketing? Should I be doing Facebook? Should we, be, should we be buying this listing over here for $2,100 a month? And when you can show, that's where Google Analytics is like the answer to all of those questions. Um, and then measuring conversions on social media um, in Google Analytics as well, you, not, not only will you be able to, and in class four, we can, we'll set up any number of conversions that make sense for your business. So you don't have to be e-commerce. It can be lead generation forms. It can be uh, views of a particular page on your site that you're trying to funnel users to. It can be um, video views. You know, if, if there's like a sponsor that needs a certain amount of impressions for a sponsorship and they happen to be sponsoring a video and we need to get people to a live stream or a video or something like that, we can um, set that up as a conversion, both in Facebook and in Google Analytics. And then again, you can show, you can have the data in Google Analytics, you can compare it to what other channels drove traffic to that page. And then in Facebook, you can, you can see the data around that. So that's what these screenshots are. Um, I won't hit on this too much because we really get into it in the fourth class, but conversion paths are where um, you see that like a Google AdWords ad was the first way that 21 people who converted on this site learned about the site, but then they went away and then they came back from another link somewhere and then they went away and then they typed in the URL to the address bar, not once but twice and then, and that happened 21 times. So Google Analytics will track all of this. And the reason why I wanna bring it up is because when you're talking about like, I hate to say justifying your ad spend, but when you're, when you're tracking your overall ROI, it's important to also look at not only how many conversions came from Facebook Ads Manager, where you have all that data, but also to check Google Analytics and see where else did, did social media advertising or marketing or any of the efforts that we talk about in class one and class two play a role in any kind of conversion. Because as we've all kind of talked about and we all know as a user, you don't use Facebook or Instagram to make a purchase or to sign up for, or to, you don't use it to learn about something that you've never learned about before and then spend your money or your time. You use it because you're compelled by whoever you're connected with or following on the platform as a consumer, like as just a fan of, of that activity, leisure, you know, escapism. So as a marketer, you shouldn't necessarily expect 
that's why there is this big long phase one, phase two, because you're laying the groundwork for all of this. You're connecting with the audience through your content, and then you're converting them. Um, so we talk about uh, one more thing that I want to talk about in terms of conversions, and that's like m messenger is a huge uh, thing in my mind that needs to be looked at as a conversion because. As marketers, we've always asked, and if, if anyone's familiar with like HubSpot and any kind of Google AdWords marketing where there's a like marketing automation or like drip marketing and stuff like that, I'm less and less a fan of that and I'm more and more a fan of what's the easiest way to communicate with your target audience that's most effective for them. So if you, if you think about Facebook Messenger as a conversion and the ad platform, hey Jamie, and the ad platform has um, Messenger now as an ad objective for a conversion that it'll track. So it's, it's going to start serving, it'll, if you select that, it'll serve your ad to people who are more likely to message you off the ad. And you're, so in that case, you're not asking somebody to leave Facebook. You're just asking them, you're not asking them to click through to a landing page to then fill out another form. You're just saying, why don't you just talk to us now? Because we're here and you're here. So I think marketers really need to get in the mindset of like, what's easiest for the user to convert? Like, if you're on Facebook, you're deploying a Facebook ad, you choose Messenger as the conversion, um, and then you're there the same way that you would be there to respond, or your sales team is there the same way that they would be there to respond to a form submission through your website, you're gonna convert more off of that messenger ad than you are off of an ad that says, hey, let's click through to our website. So, um, <clears throat> all right. Um, on the strategy side, so we're gonna go through like, yeah. I just had a quick question. I was wondering, like, in your opinion, do you feel um, like maybe the awareness column is kind of irrelevant, like instead of just raising awareness, why wouldn't you actually have them do an action? Because, and I'm just like wondering because I think maybe I can't, I, maybe I did like one brand awareness campaign and maybe I think you could like in like the upper right hand corner, mm -hmm. but I think you could do that for almost all of them, even if they're not just a like ad, I could be wrong. But instead of, like, for instance, if you did, like, the National Fashion Alliance, right? Instead of aware, raising awareness, wouldn't it be better to have them fill out a form for member access instead of, like, I don't, like, every time I see that, I'm always like, what is that? What yeah, is why that? would I do that? that? Like, yeah, like, why would I do that instead of driving action, even if the action is just... Right. to drive it to the website. But then I'm like, well, maybe I'm yeah. just being well, silly and I don't really know what the purpose is. That's a good question. And the only time that I've used it is like in conjunction with something else. So I'm like picturing the funnel being really big, you know, and we're like out here. And I think you just get a lot more post reach. The, the reach is so much further. They serve it up to more people mm -hmm. where when you have it like drilled down to the more specific stuff, you'll notice that the numbers are lower. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think the... Yeah, you're not getting like the actual, you know, the link click back to your website, or you're not getting the page like, or you're not getting the, you know, whatever call to action you're watching them wanting to watch a video, but more people see it. So it's kind of what do you what do you want to do? You know, like yeah. if you want to use a general, super, super general ad, um, a lot of eyeballs get to see it. So maybe that's something to that, think about. That's exactly it. It's uh it's the cost per that. Like it's, so if you select a, an action where your objective is to have them do like a link click or a page view, so there's uh, under the traffic objective, there's two different ways to do traffic. There's a link click and a, tra and a landing page view. And so if you were to do one of those um, and spend say $500 against that versus $500 against awareness or reach, um, you would pay more, you would pay the same amount of money and you would get far less reach and awareness off of the second objective than you would off of the objective. So it's, if you already have, like if you're a, a brand that's extremely well known in your, like if you've 
clearly penetrated your geographic and your interest area and you have high brand awareness already, then I would say it totally makes sense to just go directly to a um, more mid-funnel objective, like con consideration, basically okay. like what you're talking about. So there's definitely validity to what you're saying. If you're starting from ground zero or you've never done Facebook ads before and, you've ne and you haven't really done, like really haven't done that much marketing, um, comparatively to where like you aspire to be, then I would definitely do, you're gonna get more bang for your buck out of like a real awareness phase. The reason why is because you're gonna build more data around who's interacting with your ad so that when you get to phase two and phase three, you're hitting people who have more awareness of your, you're hitting more people who have more awareness of your product and service for less money. It's really the less money part. Yeah, the less money, I think, too. And, and I'll give you a number. So for $58, 20, almost 28,000 people saw that, that piece of content. Where for $30, you know, 14 people liked it. So do you want to, like, you know, 1 million times, you know, up your reach and, and how many eyeballs have seen it? Especially with something really graphically neat. You know, it, it, it resonates, and if you see it three and four times, it's like, man, you know, it's this beautiful image that we're seeing over and over again, and we're equating it with, with you. So, I know it's kind yeah. of you, you, the number doesn't sound good because it's like that's how many people saw it, but the number is so high right. that it yeah. justifies it, I guess. Yeah. I'm just always I hope wondering. That I was like, well, yeah, I know the same thing, and I was like, why would I spend? I wondered year? until I actually started doing it. Yeah. A lot and seeing that what kids said. But yeah, the client loves to hear that like, you know, thirty four thousand people saw that. It's always good to question it. Mm -hmm. It's always good to question it even in phase like I mean, even when you're in phase three and you're converting and you're like, um, you know, maybe you're still running kind of a, a little bit of other kinds of ads. I mean it's always good to question like is the and that's the beautiful thing about digital media is you can say, I want to spend $50 a day, or I want to spend $5 a day, or whatever, for X amount of time. You don't, you're not committing to that. Like you, can, you can see, this is not working as well as this other thing, and I'm going to pause this and put that money that I had allocated over here. So I think it's, I think it's good to commit to the strategy of a, 12, a 9 to 12 month plan, where for the first, where really for the entire time, you're doing some kind of page-like campaign. Because that's going to be like your baseline of, I'm constantly going out and getting a dozen or so new, uh, cust like likely customers because of the targeting that I put into my page like campaign every week or so, depending on how much you're spending. And so that builds up over time, kind of like interest in your in your uh, money market account or whatever. And then so that's your constant. And then your first three months of kind of your starting off plan is you're running only awareness and, and uh, basically the, the, the first phase, the awareness and reach ads. And then from months three to six or three to nine, you're doing consideration. And then after that, you're doing um, conversion. Um, and also layering in new, like new, in, in theory, you're a business where you're, there's going to be new opportunities, new potential target customers that are coming along to the areas where you want to, okay, how do we grow? Like we've hit our target market. How do we grow further? And then, so then you're going to start like awareness and reach campaigns to those again while you're running uh, the conversion based ads to the other targets. And when I say targets, I mean like um, employees of XYZ company, job titles from a company, or if you're more B to C than people who are interested in these activities. Um, if you're a brand, people who are uh, fans of these other brands that are kind of competitors to me or similar to me, that kind of thing. And you can't mess it up and it's gonna change yeah. and it doesn't, like sometimes it doesn't, you can have like all the intentions in the world and for whatever reason, that blew up and the other thing was a total turd. You just don't know. <laughs> you just have to keep going and trying, trying, and trying and there'll, there'll be a reason as to why that didn't work and then you'll, or you'll try to emulate it and it would, you just gotta keep going. And there's really sometimes, I, I hate to say there's no rhyme or reason, but there kind of isn't. Any other thoughts or questions? I mean, like, now's a good time to voice any, like, concerns or trepidations, too. 
It's kind of hard. Um, or like getting stuck on content or anything. These next few slides are just kind of meant to, like these are real life examples of, so you can kind of take a look at content. These are just kind of customer testimonials from a brand in the running um, uh, ads that are meant to, uh, we're, so we're paying for impressions. This is the awareness phase. But we're optimizing the ad for conversions because on the website, it happens to be an e-commerce website. So even though you might have a, a consideration that's for awareness, you can still have an objective that will, you can, you can pick something as you're deploying the ad that will say, I want this ad to show to people that are still more likely to, to convert on my website even though it's for an awareness phase. So that's kind of a way of being the best of both worlds. And I'll show you guys what that looks like. And so sending it to a landing page, another example, these happen to be ads that were each $200 total were spent in a one month period, just to give you an idea. This particular brand decided to do three different ads, um, just to give you an idea of a strategy. Um, so basically phase one, it was basically like $600, uh, $200 per ad, so $600 spent total on the awareness phase for three different ads, targeted at three different groups. So one was um, more geared around churches, one was more geared around businesses, and the other was more geared around like small organizations that might need a different type of product. So that's where we took, you know, earlier we led off with who's your target audience, or who are maybe your top three different targets, and then in phase one, you don't have to run ads to all of them, but this particular brand decided to do that. Um, so phase two, add one, this is where we're getting. Um, now phase two is that consideration phase. So this is where you can start to use the tracking pixel. And this is where, with the tracking pixel installed, you can go in and, add and deploy an ad to someone who's visited a particular page on your website. So um, I'll just kind of pause and Does that make sense what the Facebook you tracking that. pixel is? Because I, if you don't understand what it is, you won't see the value. Does that make sense as to what it does and what it is? Or should we explain that again? I don't understand what tracking pixels do, but how? Go ahead. I mean, go ahead and explain it. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I just don't want to just explain. Like, go, go over it quickly because it's. I think sometimes it's good to like show. The potatoes of the whole. So we put in pixels, I think, for a few people last last time. Because there's a company, what was it called, um, AdRoll? They mm -hmm. have you go in and put pixels on your website to track things. And I mean, I understand the concept, mm -hmm. but you know how it applies to this. Yeah, I mean, really, what a pic what a pixel really does is it um, puts you in a position to show ads to people who have already been to your website. That's really what it is. They, it's called a tracking pixel because it also shows you data off of what your ad did for you. But really what it is is uh, <clears throat> like using just our company as an example, like we, let's say in our awareness phase, let's say we turn the academy into an e-learning platform. And then we want anyone in the world can take our courses online. So we, we now, but nobody knows, like nobody knows who we are or that we're doing this or whatever. So I all of a sudden want to spend $500 a month just building awareness for that. So I go out in the awareness phase and I target digital marketing coordinators, uh, college, like college students who are studying marketing, anyone who's needing to learn these skills, small business owners, different things like that. And then I go out and run targeted ads against the, those different audiences. And then with the, if I have the Facebook, it's the Facebook pixel is just a snippet of code that we put in our website, that's all it is. So we have that pixel in our website. Then in phase two, I can go and I can say, all right, now, out of all those people that came to my website in phase one, any person, not just the people that came in from the Facebook ads, but now I wanna run ads on Facebook to anyone who viewed the Data Driven Academy e-learning page. And then I wanna run ads to anyone who put that item in their cart but didn't check out. And then I wanna run ads to anyone who signed up for an email subscription or signed up for the free demo but didn't. So 
anything that you can think of in your sales funnel around that, it would apply to being able to then go back and serve ads on Facebook. Um, this is maybe a little off topic, but like, so a lot of it sounds like you gotta have a lot of coordination between like the sales department and like other, like what do those conversations need to look like so that you know what information to get so that, you know, you're not like, I don't know if you have any advice for that because that's something that mm -hmm. for a company like ours, we're really small, we just don't have, they don't, they wouldn't even know what to, information to provide us with. And, and yeah. so how, does, how do those conversations need to look like from a company? I mean, I see it as an opportunity for anyone in your position to be able to like be the, the person that educates their company that this exists, first of all. Like, if I were you, I'd go in and I'd be like, hey guys, um, whether or not we're gonna do any of this, I just wanna plant the seed that all of this exists within a platform that's free for us to use and it's super inexpensive to pay for media. And we get all this data off of it to see whether or not it works. So whether or not we're gonna do it, if anyone, is interested to learn about the capabilities of this, let me explain it to you. And that's where I would start. That's where I'd start the conversation. Just to say like, as consumers, you have seen this kind of marketing yeah. and you have converted off of it. And we have the capability of doing it. And to say like, like to say to the sales people, or the sales guy, yeah. like here's what <laughs> I need from you um, in order to really do this effectively, um, you know, don't leave me in the dark when you're when you have these proposals out there, or if you're struggling with one, you don't know how to reach them, like those types of things are helpful for us to know because one, you, like you do yeah. have to educate, and then you right. also have to go in there and say, like specifics. What do I need from you? So I we think have a system with one of our um, with one of our clients that every time they have the sales meeting and they have their list of leads that were that I'm involved in the list of leads. Okay. So mm -hmm. now that I have it. Now I'm able to go target those folks too, and so it's like you know you're hitting them from all sides. But yeah, getting getting that there would be like some turnkey way that you guys get you know what's going on with the in the proposal phase somehow looped in is is awesome to to be able to you know go come in from every angle. Yeah, sounds a little bit much fun. And yeah, that's a great example for sure. And I was gonna say. Because they don't care about you until like you help them make the sale. Right. And then like, oh wait, wow. You like me now? That's fine. We've also had success <laughs> in cases where the um, the client like the the leadership at the organization knows what the objectives what the ob not objective like the um, objections have been from prospective clients. So very many times in B2B you know what the objections are. You know the reasons why people don't go with you, because um, like you've got like, and your sales team knows that better than anyone. They know like they have all the anecdotal data points around why yeah. Stuart, in your case, wasn't chosen, yeah. or maybe why you were chosen. So I would ask for that too, not only the lead list, but also like what are what are the top objections? Like how are you gathering information on why Stuart is or isn't winning? The bids that we're getting, that we're putting out there, because then that's what you create your content around. Yeah. So you take the the top ten or the top three objections as to why people weed out Stewart <laughs> from their their proposal process, and then you create content around why you are that solution for them, mm -hmm. and then you deploy that to those to the people that Kate's that the lead list that Kate's talking about, and um, that planting that seed is going to be where it'll pay off in the long run and then you'll know from the data in the Facebook yeah. ads manager how that how the digital component it's like it's it's not it's t to me it's taking like oh well our business is just word of mouth and it's just offline but it's using the digital tool to be able to like totally enhance and like slay the game yeah. of overall say it like sales and marketing yeah because that's where people are. Um, so you're not hitting chief operating officer, or chief finance officer, when he or she is at home scrolling through their Facebook or Instagram feed. 
but you're hitting Sally, who's the CEO, who happens to be the CFO at this company that has to make a big decision in the next week. It's the same person. Yeah. And that just and so if your messaging is around their objection or solving their problem, and that's where it can really work. So is that like yeah, practical no. enough? For, I mean, or is it like, I think it comes is that what to, you're thinking of or not? Yeah, no, it is. It just comes down to internal processes and yeah. like getting everybody, one, you gotta educate them, which is always like a pain. And then, and, t- and like connecting the dots and then getting them to understand why they need to communicate certain, you know, like we just found out like a week before I left for that trade show that he was going to a trade show and it's like well if we had done that oh yeah we I think have... for us it might be kind of like what Kate said how we just need to do it ourselves without involving them in the first like three months stage when we're doing like the lights campaign because that doesn't need to involve them mm-hmm. right um, and then like we should just yeah mess with it and kind of like get our ground understand it yeah mm-hmm. once but we get the second stage and say oh we've been doing it targeted so show them why it makes some money. Yeah, money we've matters. already acquired, yeah. yeah. I think hey, you gotta kind of keep money. them in the loop, though. Like, yeah. if you're, like, if you're doing something where you're, like, do, like putting brand awareness out there, yeah. like, maybe if you're, like, wondering this, I would have him maybe explain to you how his process works. Like, let me know, go from that perspective, and then from there, create an ad and say, hey, you know, from understanding the way your process works, we're gonna create an ad and then that will hopefully generate some leads and when the leads come through, maybe follow back up with him. Like I feel like, and maybe I do it wrong, but like when I do the lead generation forms, I have to follow up, like I'll pull down the forms every day and I'll send it to whoever is going to um, contact these individuals, but then I keep a spreadsheet. And so then I keep notes on like, you know, did you call these people because so I have them submit like their name, their email, their number. Did you call them? You know, what was the reaction? Did you book a consultation? Did they pay for a course? Um, in the spreadsheet, I keep like how much, um, uh, like potentially a program could cost depending on like one of the companies I do the ads for. It's like a financial institution, so each of the courses have different um, costs. So then I keep that in a yeah. column as like potential earning. So you could kind of like let him know, like if you close this lead, this is what the potential yeah. earning is, and then you yeah. know, like it's it, I do that every day, but it just seems like if you're not if you're not controlling yeah. and keeping up with the leads and following up back with people, people aren't gonna follow with you. And I feel like in marketing, it's kind of like when the dollars are spent, you know, just like you said, it's like unless you bring in money, it's kind of like, well, what are you doing right. out here, you know? Because brand awareness is great. I do think that's it. But it doesn't necessarily show yeah. measurable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you have to like. It's, it's, not the, it's not what they want to see. However, if you do it in tandem with the other item, right. it's going to right. boost yeah. the other thing. And and you, they don't know what they're talking. So you just do you, and then yeah. and not just explain yeah. to them, but just follow what, up what they in a circle and keep a spreadsheet of everything. Yeah, yeah. That's what I, was I think you guys are totally onto something, like you yeah. said, uh, where like you do that, you you bring to the table like hey we've increased yeah our we we basically acquired like a thousand new potential customers through our digital media on Facebook in the last 6 yeah. months and now we feel like we're ready to educate yes, you guys yeah. on what else is possible with this audience how to further engage them let's talk about what you've got going on we'll tell you what our possibilities are and then if you follow up with these leads you could potentially earn yeah. this much I don't think they think that they need you, they maybe, don't. and no, so... They don't think about it at all. It's like they're siloed into their <clears throat> sales funnel, and then they don't, they're don't. they not connecting that we could be... You know, that trade show, like, like, you could have... I mean, you guys know this, but I'm preaching to the choir, but, like, you could have deployed all these ads that we've been talking about to the audience yeah. of the trade show. Like, that's actually, like, this. so this is a trade show audience list where I think we were given like 2,000, we were given 2,000 email addresses from our client of people who were coming to this trade show. 750 of them matched Facebook profiles. So, um, so now what that means is like 750 of those email addresses from that list that had 2,000 roughly, we can now deploy Facebook ads to those 
though to just those 750 people that we know are coming to the trade show about our client's brand being there strictly with messaging around what our booth number is what you can do to register yeah. to, to get information at our booth all of that and we can create a look -alike. if we know that there's 50,000 people coming to the trade show for, for whatever reason or we know that the audience of people who wishes they could go to the trade show is 50,000 we can create a look -alike. this is all with just like two clicks yeah. <laughs> create a look-alike audience which is this off of the fewer than 1,000 of 2.1 million in this case and then we can deploy a different messaging to that audience so that's the tr the trade show is the lowest hanging fruit for us to kill for you guys to kill it if only with you us. know that it's coming right you just need you just, to know that it's coming and build it into the you just mentioned trade show i had two different conversations this week they're both sponsors pretty big sponsors one said could you get your social media person on here and let's talk about how to make this happen. The other one said, uh, we're not going to sponsor you anymore because they basically figured out Facebook ads and their reach and the money that the least amount of money they can spend get the maximum reach. And they even said, we quit going to trade shows because we figured out how we can reach all of those people without sending, you know, 10 people. Because they would set up this huge trade show booth yeah. and they would send 10 people and spend all that money. And they figured that out and they just interesting and then, and then they're you pay for your registration and you get that entire email list yeah and get those the, ads will tell them if you want to see this product in person here it is it's, you can go right down the street and here it is and so, now you can even uh that's really interesting it is because i gained one sponsor because they don't know what they're doing with this and i lost the other one because they did so <laughs> you know so now do i search for people that don't know what yeah, but most of the target people who are <laughs> most of the companies I work with are big enough to have you know the, this knowledge and this group of people. To, so I don't. Yeah. Then it's back to television. That's super you interesting. You know, <laughs> and Netflix. And you know, now you got another whole story. Whole story TT but, stuff. Just, yeah. So Jamie, like for you, I'm thinking like my personal example are like my shoes because like I go to nike.com and then like put all these items into my cart all the time and then I don't always buy all the shoes but then I get all the ads reminding me to buy the shoes that I have in my cart. So like for you with your e-commerce store and stuff, I mean, this what we're talking about is with when the Facebook tracking pixels on your site, which is easy to put in there, um, if you're ever running any kind of ads, like you can target ads to people that you know have put a specific item in their cart or viewed a specific product, but maybe haven't checked out yet or added it to their card yet. And you can send them an ad that's relevant to like, maybe like a photo of like what their home could look like, what a home looks like with that product in it. Or you know, something where they like, I mean for me, like Nike just literally serves up the shoes <laughs> that were in my time. when I'm looking at something, I yeah. like, start getting all these ads. Yeah. And they're like, how do they know my brand? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that actually like sometimes to, it's so creepy. Yeah. To do that, literally it's just in Facebook. So all I did was I'm in Facebook Ads Manager and I went to audience under all tools here and then audiences. And then that's how I got to here. And then if I just do create audience, I'll just kind of give you guys an overview. So the one I was just telling you about is if you go custom audience and you do website traffic. So this is a website that has the Facebook tracking pixel installed. You can do something like, I'm gonna create an audience. Once you create the audience, then when you're creating an ad, when you're creating the ad, it allows you to select this audience that you now have saved. So once you add, like, we're building the audience, you can say all website visitors in the last 30 days, 90 days, 120 days. Um, you can do people who visited a specific web page, so that's where you can type in the URL. So this is as simple as like the uh, whiskey <coughs> stones or something like that. Like you could say, you could put like that URL in here, and then you can serve an ad of like a video of people pouring drinks, you know, using the whiskey stones instead of ice cubes, and you can serve that ad up to the people who viewed that page, right? So it's super relevant. And like fifty dollar, fifty dollar ad is going like to um, 
500 people who viewed that page in the last 30 days, and then maybe you get, you know, hopefully, you're, I think you're more like, the data kind of shows, so this is phase three, right? So like phase, phase two, the end of phase two and into phase three, the data is showing that like that's where you're getting that th two to three, hopefully more times the return on ad spend. So you spend 50 bucks on an ad, hopefully you get like $150 worth of orders off of those whiskey stones or something like that. And hopefully the whiskey stones don't cost you that much, but you know, yeah. you gotta, there's your hard costs and all that you have to factor in. But in terms of the advertising side, that the, the different things that are capable, that's just one example. She's not a drunk, she sells them. Let's, let's make that very clear, because Paul's like, you know, you're a whiskey. It's the worst, I was thinking of it's you. the worst example Gosh. of a product on her store that is like totally, clear, her clear store like, her store has so many beautiful home goods and fashion. And like, I, I picked whiskey. Whiskey, well, whiskey stuff. Who has the problem after all? Um, visitors by time spent on your page. And then Chris, do you want to jump up and maybe talk more about, because uh, like the other things, like custom things you can do off the of Pixel? Yeah. Different things like that. You don't have to jump up, you can okay. stay seated if you want. Yeah, so the the basic use of Pixel, like Paul was saying, is um, tracking people who visit your site. But with a little bit of um, kind of adjustment, you can track other actions. So the Pixel can create audiences for you based on a particular action, such as someone who filled out a form or somebody who visited a very specific URL, even if it's really long, you can plug that in. Or um, you can create your own actions. So if you have, you know, maybe it's not a form, but maybe it's a button on your site that links somewhere else, you can track who has clicked that button. So you can dive in very specifically to, to kind of pick your goals and find Facebook users who have kind of gone through that little funnel. And then maybe you make, like last time I made a, an audience with somebody who, um, they wanted to know who hit a specific contact page. And so we found the URL, plugged it in, created a special action on the pixel, um, and now she has an audience of people who have gone multiple pages into the website. And that audience continues to refresh every day, and it's always up to date. And you can set time limits, so, the typical um, audience is the last 30 days. Anybody who has visited a page or completed an action in 30 days, but you can dive in further, say 15 days or just in the last 24 hours. Just depends on your goals and, and what your audience does on your website. And I think a good example of what you're talking about with the clicking on a button, a lot of us have like, where you might have a third party tool that um, maybe fulfills your orders or books your events or handles your uh, drop shipping or handles your payments for sponsorships or something like that. So that could be where it might not be like yourdomain.com, but it might be that third party domain setting up users who click on the button that then takes you over there to book your book their event or whatever. That would be like your equivalent of, you know, you uh, if, if the user's actually on um, like your big commerce or Shopify site, you're gonna have the URL. Like we're gonna know this is the page, we just need to paste it in there. But if you're like, let's say you guys have an event through Eventbrite or something like that, I don't know, throwing that out there, that's where you could use the clicking on the button over to Eventbrite, mm -hmm. just this as an example. Yep. Um, so that's, that's a custom audience off of your web traffic, just some examples there. And then other ways to do custom audiences, you probably saw this as I was doing this, is customer file. So that's the email list, that's the trade show email list that I was telling you, that's how we got that in there. LinkedIn does the same thing. So earlier I talked about all this stuff, LinkedIn also does it. Um, and LinkedIn also has the ability to save these audiences. So whether you're doing Facebook or LinkedIn. Um, and then the lookalike is pretty fascinating because again, that's where Facebook is saying, you know, you gave us this list of I mean, you could do it with like, if only, you know, to what Chris's example was of, some, of putting in a URL or clicking on a button. I mean, if you went back 100, and, realistically, you're gonna go back to like 120 days, because that's gonna give you enough of an audience size. Uh, maybe for you guys, you probably don't have to go back 120 days, because you guys have pretty significantly high web traffic. But like, for a lot, for most uh, websites, they're gonna have to go back 90 days-ish and say, 
all right, anyone who viewed this URL, and you might get a number back that's like 1,500 people, and that might seem very low to you. Uh, even if you get 500 people, that might seem very low to you, but then that's where you can say, all right, look-alike audience, and then that's where Facebook will match up other profiles of the interests of the people that had, had viewed your page. Um, so, Facebook tracking pixel installation. We did that with some of you guys last time. And we can do that very easily, but I'll, I'll actually, I'll just kind of walk you through on the slides. So, if I get back to where I was. Okay. So Facebook tracking pixel installation. Um, it's basically going to be a step-by-step -step process where you go into your business manager account under pixels, create. It'll, there'll be a button that says create a new pixel. It'll give you the opportunity to either, uh, I always say like email it to yourself because you email it to yourself and then you can forward it to your web developer or somebody to put it in there for you. Um, but it'll get, basically just gives you this code and then what Chris was talking about is uh, we can kind of modify, like any web developer can kind of modify this code and put different events in it. But really all you need to do is just put this code into your website and you're gonna be able to do all the things that I just showed you how to do. Um, and then we'll kind of spend a little bit of time on what these ads sort of look like to give you guys an idea, hopefully a little bit of comfort level of what it's like to run an ad. Um, so I'm gonna back out and actually do this with you guys. I think it's better to just do it. So here's where we were back when we were kind of creating a little demo ad for data-driven design. And we're gonna pretend that it's uh, pro fast pitch for a second. Um, so we're building our audience to different, um, you know, you can do, you can see that when you go to suggestions, all the different things that you get. Um, so let's do steward transportation real quick too. So let's say you guys all talked and strategized about who, what would make sense, like who would make sense to run an ad to. And you've got like more than likely a customer list is gonna make sense. But then maybe there's like a sales prospect list of larger companies that are moving a lot of people around. Any off the top of your head that you want me to try to type in here? You want like a person or a, 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 uh, a business name? Merits, M-A-R-I-T-Z. What does it say? I'm sorry, I can't read that. M-A-R-I-T-Z. Uh -huh. What's the, what did it populate it? Oh, it's a person's name, so that's... Where it's travel? Where it's travel? I don't know. Yeah, that's what's the official name. Maybe they don't exist. It, okay, well... George P. Johnson? That was a dud, sorry. No, that's fine. George P. Johnson? Jesus. I mean, I know they have a Facebook page, right? Oh, we're going at, like Toyota or no? I think it's Merit. I think so. Okay. So Toyota, let's see, like just really quick. Let's look. I feel like this, this would be our good stuff. Mm -hmm. Auto know. shows. Toyota. CMA, the professional. Why does underwater basket weaving come up? <laughs> <laughs> because I was showing that's like super obscure. I know, but we're trying to find ones that like should have a. I didn't, I didn't like set it. Like <laughs> I don't know why George P. Johnson didn't come up, but. I don't know. Alright. It's a 
it's what kind of company is George P. Johnson? It's there, it's at Experience J or G P J. Um, there and like advertising, but primarily for auto. Okay. It's just Experience Marketing, so you could do uh, Experience Marketing, and it pick anything that comes up from that. Come on, suggestions. Don't fail me here. Auto shows, exhibition. I'm gonna just put some of these in. Yeah, here. that's fine. It starts to get better. It starts to like see what you're putting in. So we're building our audience. It give, it'll give us the it'll give us the ability to save the audience right here if we like it, if we want to refine it a little bit before we save it. And hopefully it'll draw me right back where I was. Yeah. No. No, we don't do that again, do we? So we build our audience, we can save it. And then once we get down here, um, automatic placements will, will basically just put your ad where Facebook deems it to perform best, which is fine. But if you do edit placements, you can actually see, um, you can check or uncheck exactly where you want your ad to show. And I think this is useful because like most of the time, what works best is to be in a news stream so you're gonna to wanna to keep like feeds and but like the right column ads don't typically do as well. So you might wanna you know just kind of take a look at um, where you actually wanna be. I just wanna show you guys this. Um, again, you can also turn off Instagram. So if, uh, we don't necessarily recommend turning off Instagram because typically it does pretty well to have that data to see how like how well your ad did on Instagram versus Facebook and you can see all of that automatically in um, the ads manager as well as in Google Analytics for anyone who clicks through, because Instagram will allow you to you know, have a URL that the user can click through on your ad. You can also do Instagram stories. So if you feel like you have like a video, uh, what would be interesting, like let's say for you guys, is if you're building this audience um, around uh, you know, this particular, um, like let's say Toyota's event planners and you're building out that audience, um, you can then show in as a user, um, like that kind of B2B user is on Instagram, as they're navigating through their personal stories who, who they're following, mm -hmm. then they'll, they could see like a video of, maybe it's a 15 second video of like buses being loaded in with like a message about um, like, like a time lapse video of like people yeah. people getting in moving and then uh, then you can swipe like messaging around swipe up to a URL for more information about you know the st Stewart right. transportation event um, event transportation services and stuff. I saw your light bulb go off for you with the swipe up. What were you thinking? I'm, <laughs> I I'm trying to um, engage more or er, drive more engagement because so many of our um, our followers are young people yeah. who are got the got the scrolls and mm -hmm. I would really <laughs> like to educate them while they're scrolling. So that yeah. Like so this is a good way for you guys to yeah. get into. <laughs> Gosh. You'll keep in mind that you'll sh with this it'll be super low cost, which is awesome. Yeah. You'll show up, and you can turn if you just wanted to run just for stories, like turn everything else off just on the Instagram stories um, and you do it through Facebook Ads Manager and just keep in mind that like your promoted story will show in the middle of when users are going through the stories of the people that they follow yeah, yeah. so under that context and it swipes up to whatever URL you put into the ad so it's pretty sweet um, all right messengers what I was telling you guys about earlier too so I'm, I'm big on like 
businesses running ads to where the call to action is like message us instead of click through to this landing page. Um, so that's how you can, you can, um, you have to have the Facebook feeds. I think, um, going on to the budget, because I think this is something that's really common, and I set ads all the time, and mess this up <laughs> all the yeah. time. Do you see where it says budget at the top, and it's um, lifetime budget? That little button there, yeah. click down, because a lot of times, like, scroll down in lifetime budget, I'll go up to lifetime budget, and click down. A lot of times it will say, it will default to the other one, and it's daily yeah, budget, and you wanted does. to run two hundred dollars, but now you have it two hundred dollars for the day. And so you're, you're like, be like, whoops! <laughs> <laughs> but you meant two hundred dollars over the next two months, you know, or whatever. So just know that that's be careful before you get too hasty <laughs> and go too now. fast. Yeah, and this will look the same for whatever objective you pick. I happen to pick traffic objective for this one, and so. Kate, that's a great point. And then also, you, so you want to like double check your budget, make sure it's daily or lifetime, and then make sure that, and if it's daily, like it'll show you, like, if you're, you know, it, it adds it up down here, so your ad will run. And then as you toggle your date range, it'll, it'll show you all of that. But what I was gonna say too, is Samantha made me think of something earlier where, um, link clicks it'll default to and see how it says switch to landing page views and Kate and I came across this recently working on some social media ads for a client where your link clicks are always going to be higher than your web traffic number in Google Analytics that you get from the ad because basically you want to switch to landing page views because what happens is link clicks I mean you can just see here link clicks is going to deliver the ad to people who are most likely to click on the Facebook link. But think about what happens when you click on a Facebook link, especially on your mobile device. It can take like four or five seconds to load to get over to the actual web page that you're clicking onto. So it's counting link clicks, but a lot of times it's not counting. Like the person didn't even ever come to your site because they just clicked on And then their user behavior is like, ah, oh, never mind. Like I'm just going to go back because it's taking so long to load. That's why I'm a big fan of the Messenger one. Also, so click, do landing page views because then it's gonna show your ad to the people that are actually essentially waiting for the landing page to load. So it's tracking all of that. That's kind of a relatively new thing that they added, which is nice. And then once you, um, once you have a budget going, you can go on to create your ad which some of you probably have some questions about. But, Kate, do you want to talk about creating an ad at all? Sure. Um, obviously, it, you know, it's gonna depend on what your creative is, or which one you're gonna pick. Um, and I think that varying them is the, is the move, for sure. Like if you just did a single image, maybe now try a carousel, going back and forth between the three videos. Those, those first three are great ones. Um, I think the, the deal here is just, just trial and error. So it, you have, and you really do have to read all the fine print and figure out what's going on. Um, and then once I do, they always change it like the month after I've figured it all out. Um, so it's just a lot of trial and error. It's hard to go, go and scroll down and maybe. Yeah, and Liz, this is where it answers your question of, so it's 12, recommended size, if you were to pick the single image ad, is 1200 by 628. Mm -hmm. Something frustrating if you, um, if you're into the, the Canva piece of this, is if you make a Canva and it's the wrong size, now it's cut out like you know half of your image. Um, but now Canva has updated something that says Facebook ad. Yeah. So it's the perfect size for the Facebook ad. Also, if you do ever do anything and you don't want to keep recreating it over and over, Canva also has a resize my design. And if you click on the top left, resize your design, it will instantly, like it'll say which one would you want it to be, like make it a poster. No, so you're taking the same thing and to scale, it's changing it to whatever size you want. So I redo that for like my Pinterest pins and stuff like that. So I don't recreate the whole thing for the Facebook. Yeah. Like I already like the creative. Um, but yeah, um, I don't think of any like tips I have. It's just a matter of practice, actually. I know it's not the easy answer, but. Some of these like. Uh, it's like getting confidence to do it. Yeah, yeah it is making you sweaty, you know, as you're going like, yeah. Uh -huh. um, so once you load in your creative, this is where you can put in 
your landing page URL. This is where the button, um, like your button is gonna show. So I'm just gonna put an image in here so we can see this. We wanted to run an ad like promoting Bailey. <coughs> we would have like, we could do a landing page URL here to Bailey's bio and then it could be learn more about Bailey. But what I was talking about was uh, send message. So if this were like a landing page, um, if you're thinking, okay, I wanna generate leads through a landing page, consider running two ads and just saying, all right, this, this first ad I'm gonna do for link clicks and I'm gonna do a call to action that is um, learn more, for example and my learn more is gonna click the user through to the landing page, and on the landing page there's gonna be some information in the form, and then the, with the other half of my budget, I'm gonna do the same creative, but I'm gonna do a um, send message button, and I'm gonna be prepared for the user to just send me a message directly through Facebook, and then you can put, um, the good news is like in your text and in your headline, you can put, um, Quite a, bit of, quite a bit of information in the text that will show up above the ad. And then the headline and the um, news feed link description are gonna be really not that many characters. So if you're gonna do, like in your ad, I would recommend having, like make this text look like what you would put in a post. So I would have like a couple solid sentences, like two to three sentences of like well-written copy. And then your, your um, headline and your news link description are going to be very like li limited to like 90 characters. This is the best part though like as, as you do this and like as you're it's you know it, you can see it as you work. I also will um, make sure that I go back and forth and toggle through what is this going to look like on the mobile feed. Right. Um, is it too wordy? Um, I, I'm always a fan of the simple look. Um, so sometimes I won't even fill in the display link, the news link description. I mean, if you do all of that and fill all the forms, it gets really, you know, busy. Right. So sometimes like, okay, does this look better, does that look better, and kind of back it in and out, and just keep toggling through until you're happy with the way that it looks. Um, and some of you, you know, if you know that you have a bigger Instagram following, then you might want to keep it like super, super simple, and forget adding all the links and all the craziness in. Um, and if you're only, that's a good point. If you're only like back to where we were on the previous screen, like if you only select an Instagram news feed ad, then like you might want to write like write your copy more for Instagram, or then maybe you're you like thinking of the Instagram user in mind on that. Mm -hmm. um, Videos. If you do a video, it will make you do a lot more descriptors. It makes you go into like a lot more. You know, there's going to be a lot more um, fields to populate. So. Just know that that's it. Add an extra 15 minutes for setting that ad up because it asks a, a slew of questions that you have to deal with. Um, that's why sometimes just boosting the post if you're in a, if you're in the crunch is just the best way to do it instead of creating the, the video. Special. That's the hard part. Yeah, yeah. But videos again will give you an extra piece yeah. that you have to go through that whole. And one thing that we kind of glossed over on the previous screen, so I mean, other than that, it's like just go run your ad, see how well it does. It'll show you like, okay, tracking pixels installed, confirm, um, don't overthink it at first. Like we know we want it to be good in quality and everything, but like I would get it going, see how well it does. And then one thing just for like a local business, like let's say we're doing more like urgent care. And I know Samantha, I know you do kind of more than more than just them, but just to use them as like a, an example, like you can just do Gallatin, Gallatin 10 C, um, and then just a X amount of mile uh, radius around Gallatin. This can be part of an audience that you save. I jumped right into the targeting, but you can do, you know, obviously geolocation is extremely important. So for phase one, like all three phases that I talked about, the, the creation of the ad is going to be the same. Um, the same, it's, the screens are going to look the same and everything. Um, but for phase one, uh, I would I would go as broad as possible. Like I would go as broad as you can possibly go. I, I would I would even consider like not even doing any detailed targeting for phase one, unless you're super super niche type of business. Um, and I would try to really like my best advice because this is really what I do every day, like every day. Um, I love my job. <laughs> um, 
I'm just saying, like, the, the things that I w really wish I would have known is that you have to, it's gonna, no matter, you're gonna spend 30 minutes on it, and then it's not gonna run, because Facebook's gonna kick it out. You go, really? So just, you have to stay patient, you have to try a million things, and it's not easy. So if it takes you 30 minutes, that's how long it takes me to do it every day. It should take, it should probably take you 45 minutes. Um, you have to read through everything, I mean, it's just not easy. And then, once you've set it, it is really fun, though, to check back in on it. Yeah. And really, you know, making sure that, is everything set right? You know, what should I do? Why did this work? And kind of dive into that a little bit. Yeah. Um, but my advice would be, do this at like 30 bucks, five times, in d five different ways, with five different objectives. And so you're just kind of like casting that wide net and sort of seeing what landed in the right spots for you. Um, and you know, before you make the two hundred dollars spend, do some good practice on the thirties, um, and get just be really patient with yourself. If you do mess up, if you do lose Wi-Fi or whatever, it will go. It'll take you back to the creative set, um, and you you can just kind of pick back up where you left off. So if for some reason you get a phone call and you're out of it now, it it will, it will kick you back into where you left off, um, right where you were confused and you stopped on purpose <laughs> because you didn't know what the heck yeah. you were doing. Yeah, yeah, um, it, it does a pretty good job of of doing that. Um, that's good advice. And he wants patience for sure. Yeah, it's definitely definitely like the practical advice too that I like there is I, I like the thirty dollars for, for some different different types of ads. Again keep in mind that these can la these should last you weeks or months, which is very different than the boosted posts. Mm -hmm. And like to Michael's question and point earlier on in the in the class the, these types of actions are going to be what grows your audience. So we've all started at zero or one or two, and um, these are very different than they're very different than the boosted posts in that they have more. They, the the creative and the thought process around them should take you forty five minutes, whereas the boosted post can just be like, oh well, that did well, or I really want to try to get this to a bunch of people who don't know who I am but are in this target. And I just want to do it for like the next few days. Boost, click, you're good. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is more, all right, why am I doing this? Again, what's that objective? What phase am I in? Um, am I, do I want to target this type of radius around that business or these types of people? And then, uh, and then look at the data over the next several weeks and months. Um, cool. So, Anyone else want to talk through or have any questions about Facebook or, or in this case, also Instagram? I have questions. Is everyone ready to run ads? Uh, which, which do you find is more effective? Like if, you, if people fill out a form in the ad or you take them to a landing page? Uh, because I haven't taken anyone to a landing page before, um, but one of the girls that I have up and talk marketing with like that's all she does is take them to landing pages and then I'm like well I don't know I never did that before I have that's a great question um, and I've been running I'm, for a client and they're putting a ton of money behind this trying to get them to the landing page to register for this thing um, it is it, it's not as easy when you have to click out of Facebook yeah. people yeah. lose the patience and then they don't want or they, they expected to see something different like I found out that I was kind of tricking them into getting to the to the registration page, like win here. Um, and then they realized, oh wait, I have to like fill out these forms aboard. And so I think staying within is definitely the answer. They couldn't for this for this like specific conference, but I would keep them in. That's and my I, I, I so read something you're talking about like this that. one, this lead generation yeah. with the ad itself. Right. So the then, form on the and ad. then you can yeah. like you can have like a little um, button where it's like sign up now. Yep. So like I just let them like sign the form for the yes. urgent care for like the weight loss program when they see an ad. I just have them like sign up for a consultation in there. Love that. And so then you know they don't. I don't take them to a landing page. It would, it would Everybody's obsessed with their website. That's what the problem, that's what yeah. the real, if you really get down to that, that's what they want people to drive traffic to their website. Yeah. But realistically, what you're doing is you're bouncing those folks. So be smart and just don't be prideful and do it through the platform that they're already on anyway. That's where they want to be or they would be on your website and they don't want to be. Right. Yeah, I would definitely only do it in the, just knowing myself, if, if it's pulling me out. Yeah, I'm frustrated. Like I'm, I'm already over it, and that's mm -hmm. so sad, but it I is. Know, so I know, it's, it's like, like uh, the, the five-second load, when you were talking totally. about that, I was like, I totally get that. I bounce every time. 
Totally. And so this is what Samantha, yeah, I totally agree with what you guys are saying. So this is what Samantha, like what she's saying, basically it starts to look like in the ad, you, uh, the user does not have to leave the platform. You as the marketer can still customize the form and what it looks like and what information. And actually, new stuff popping up all the time, but, but they're, it looks like they're even starting to, well, it says CRM integration. It says connect the CRM. But I think what it's doing is it's saying you can download a CSV file of your leads from Facebook and then upload them into your CRM. I think so. I think the CRM is what you do for the urgent care. So like you know, like you have where if someone fills out a form on the website, oh, then yeah. it always comes from Paul Hickey. So then I'll see yeah. the um, I'll see the website or the forms from you, and so I'll know that there's a form website submission. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess whenever a lead comes. From there, you can have it automatically they emailed can both to go you. To the same place, right, yeah. and so for and so it would be like a Paul Hickey, like the, so you would get it automatically instead mm -hmm. of like how I have to manually pull it down every morning. And so right. since then, there have been new ads that have come in since this morning, but then I just pull it down once a day because I'm like, I can't keep pulling it down all day. Yeah. But then I think you, so you click, you connect the CR, you integrate a CRM. And then I did that with Zapier. Mm -hmm. It seems like a disaster. Currently, the urgent care is paying for it. I don't think it's working. They don't know that. Don't tell them. I'm gonna fix it. Um, you know what I'm saying? Zaps so, aren't that expensive. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't. So yeah. I keep. I'm always like, I don't really know how. I don't understand how you're doing it. How yours is working, and this connected right. through the Facebook isn't. But every day I'm like, I need to look into that. Well, so a CRM would be yeah, like a, with all your spare time. A CRM would be like. Uh, Another platform where the web lead, so you have your website. I don't know if there's like a marker, whatever. So you have your website, and then you have Facebook, and you have your CRM. Basically, the website has the ability to send it to the CRM, and so does Facebook. So the discussion around should we be marketing, this is how you guys will have to navigate this. Like, everyone will navigate it like, Someone in the sales team or somewhere will say, we need everything going into our CRM. We don't want you to run that Facebook ad. And then someone will say, we also want somebody to go to a landing page. You as a smart marketer can say, we need to test this. We need to have part of our budget go to the landing page. The other part of our budget go to the message or go to the lead generation ad in Facebook. And oh, by the way, they can both integrate with our CRM, so you guys don't have to worry at all, because we're all going to get the data back in the same spot. And then the ad test can give us the data around what works best for our audience. And I don't know if you remember, but the URL builder tool that we talked about, where it makes you have the long link and it's a short link, I don't really post anything for any client without putting a link. Because um, it's only like, you know, seven, eight characters, by the time it's like shortened. Um, and it just, it's gonna back up our, the ad spend, you know, and justify what we're doing. So I, I always recommend, and, and it's awesome because all of the social media efforts kill all the other efforts, usually. Besides organic search, social media is number two every time. And I'm like, yes. You know, because it's, I, I'm tra I've tracked it all and sent it all through the URL builder, so every single person, you're welcome, you're welcome. You know what I mean, you can say that, as opposed to like, Facebook, People just have a negative taste in their mouth, you know that. Yeah, social media is the way that you're getting, that we're getting new eyeballs on. Mm -hmm. And organic search is the way, when you drill down into what they're searching for, they're searching for the brand name of the company anyway. So it's not really new mm -hmm. eyeballs, but. Um, the social is. Yeah. LinkedIn has three different basic types of ads. Sponsored content, which would be like your, your boosted post. And then they have a side sidebar text ad, and then they have the in mail. In mail is basically spam. We've all received in mail. Um, the sidebar text ad, work, like, is really good if you like if you need to show somebody numbers. So like if you're in a position where like there's some level of politics involved and you you need to like justify something, you can run like a sidebar text ad on LinkedIn get a lot of impressions, a lot of good numbers that you can say, hey, we're running LinkedIn. That's not as, what's really affected is the sponsored content, which is where you take the time to do the things like that we've been talking about. 
last class and today around what kind of content should you be building for your target audience. And you can actually run the LinkedIn sponsored content just like the Facebook ads that we've been talking about today. And then again, it's got you know target an audience, retarget your website visitors, upload a list. So this is like your custom audiences. Um, and then this is like, should look kind of familiar based on what we were just looking at. It's just LinkedIn's version um, where the, so the job titles and company names are super solid in Facebook, but LinkedIn, they're like one-to-one, 100% -one, accurate, because that's what LinkedIn is for. So you've got the exact company names in here, the exact, and then the geographic areas if you want them or not, and exact job titles. So you can build your audiences right off of, off of the job titles. Amazing B2B ad product. So we hit everything on here, and um, hopefully there was a good amount of information, but also like the key, I think the key points just to take away again, run, find $200 to run the Facebook page-like campaign for your business page, for a business page that you're associated with. Um, and target it at the audience, like build a, an audience that you know is gonna be relevant to something that you're trying to achieve. Um, you know, fans of travel uh, is gonna be pretty mm -hmm. solid for you to connect with some new people. And then um, it's fun to have a list of, you know, it's fun to actually see who those people are too and kind of validate like these are real people with real Facebook profiles, I can interact with them, they might message me, all that, all that good stuff. Um, and then if nothing else, just I think a good conversation that we had was just like starting the conversation either with yourself or with other people that you're working with in your business, like other departments around, this is what, this is a advertising platform Really, it's an ad, it's not really social media. It's an ad, it's a full scale, robust advertising platform that can, to your point, like completely replace TV or trade shows or anything. Like businesses can completely run their entire marketing strategy out of Facebook Ads Manager, which is crazy. I mean, it's I'm a big fan of it. Like just because it's it's low cost, you get to see all the uh, you get to test different things for low cost. You get to see all the results, all the data and compare it against everything else that you're doing. So build a quality digital business with it. And then I love the B2B side too. Um, building brand awareness has like never been easier for anyone who can provide like really good business services too. So um, I didn't really hit on Twitter, I guess. So um, let's see. Does anyone have any questions about Twitter? There's a couple cool things I can show you and then we'll wrap up because I know is it relevant anymore? Yeah. Is it relevant anymore? Is that what you said? Yeah. Um, I believe it is. I think, I mean, my, so Twitter didn't innovate for a long time, and then they, they're, they're, they've done a few different things in their app that has made it um, a little bit different. Like, one is the 280 characters, and it may seem small, but I think it's got, I've seen it get a lot more people active on the platform. There's also going to be, it's such a powerhouse, it has the numbers that people will always go back, a lot of influencers will always go back to Twitter because they're getting flooded on Instagram. Um, so they're not even deep, they're not even able to respond to their DMs and so they're going back to Twitter just to communicate with people because there's less of a like mess for them to go through. And so I think Twitter will, and t Twitter is just going to be like the news cycle. It's going to be what are, what's being talked about that day. And that's where Twitter is relevant. So having a conversation around what's relevant that day is going to be, and I think like for a business, Twitter is going to be relevant for customer service stuff. Like I, uh, mm -hmm. I went into like Brugger's and got a sandwich that I didn't think they had, and I tweeted at Brugger's and they tweeted right back to me. I went into Publix because I get sushi there all the time. And one day I was like, every time I get sushi, I taste the ginger and the wasabi on every single piece of my sushi, even though there are those separators. And I tweeted at Publix and they tweeted back to me. Like, 
So Twitter to me is super relevant for that kind of like conversational context around like what's happening and brands, smart brands are monitoring Twitter so that they can go right immediately back to their customer and build that relationship. Um, and, and from an advertising standpoint, like um, the ability to like put money behind like something that is relevant on a particular day to like followers of a competitive brand. So this is like something, one of our clients is a convenience store with like 60 locations. So an example, this is an example that I was thinking through for them. Like they could, they could be active on, like the game is that you're, you're active on Twitter so that you know what's going on on Twitter. And then when something happens either with your business or in the world, you can promote a tweet and then that tweet is actually relevant and it gets to the top of like the Twitter search and the results and everything. And then you see like a big, you can drive a lot of traffic to a retail location or something like that. So from an advertiser standpoint, I think, um, I don't know, maybe even promoting like something in a game, like a, you know, some kind of a game uh, ticket sales for an event or for a particular in game area, in a market if you're in the area, something like that. Um, Potentially, I don't know. But the targeting capabilities are just as robust for like a promoted tweet. You can hit, like I said, followers of any other handle, um, interests, and everything. So obviously I'm recommending my own resources at the end, a little self-plug, but we do, um, I mean, but like Facebook, Facebook's blog on Facebook Ads Manager is like obviously the place to go. I mean, that's where I, we all learn from doing it, from trying it, and from like reading about it on in the platform itself. Like, just the best resource for everything we talked about today is to, like to go into Ads Manager and like read all of the question mark pop-ups and like go into all the little help sidebars. And if you have a question, just like search for it right in there. And, um, and then we try to put out tips like all the time of stuff we see, just like little tips. So. Um, Cool. Well, thank, thanks again, everybody. And like, I think we've got a little bit of time. We'll hang, we'll hang around, but.